Thank you for your interest in our material on conjugate heat transfer in heat treatment of metals. In our work with COMSOL, we have developed solutions for conjugate heat transfer analyses for gas and liquid quenching of metal parts. I would first like to provide you with an overview of this section of the discussion. I will talk briefly about several different examples of this important class of problems. I will then focus on a specific heat transfer problem for heat treatment of metals and why these problems are so important. I will then discuss how this class of problems is typically solved in industry and why additional solution methods are needed. Typically, metal parts are cooled via either an air or oil quench. In this discussion, we will present the solution of both quench methods via COMSOL multiphysics. Conjugate heat transfer problems develop in a wide range of applications. These applications include electronics, aerospace, biomedical, and the primary metals industries, to name just a few. Conjugate heat transfer refers to the ability to compute conduction of heat through solids coupled with convective heat transfer in a fluid. Cooling of electronic components is needed to maintain safe operation and extend operating lifetimes. Altisim Technologies works extensively in this area and we have recently provided an overview of this problem on our blog. For turbines, as the industry seeks to develop more effective gas turbines, turbine inlet temperatures will increase. These higher temperatures apply more load to the turbine parts. Thus, improved cooling systems will be needed to extend turbine life for higher operating conditions. Thus, turbines provide an opportunity to develop conjugate heat transfer solutions for two separate flows, the hot turbine gas and the cooling system. In medicine, blood vessel cooling is an important topic. Researchers developing medical treatments that locally increase tissue temperatures seek to understand the heat transfer that occurs around the heated tissue. Blood flow can introduce substantial cooling. Applying heat transfer coefficients developed for cylindrical ducts to bioheat transfer problems often yields inaccurate solutions. Thus, solving directly for the conjugate heat transfer from tissue to the blood flow can improve the accuracy of the heat transfer solutions. For the case we are going to consider in this presentation, quenching of materials from elevated temperatures is often required to develop specific microstructural features that provide prescribed properties. The conjugate heat transfer problem develops between the quenching media, either gas or oil, and the hot metal being quenched. An accurate solution to this problem will improve the mechanical properties of the metal parts. The mechanical properties of metals develop due to the microstructure. Strength, ductility, and toughness can all be altered based on the composition of the metal and the temperature history of the part. The forming process typically occurs at an elevated temperature. The quenching operation seeks to control cooling to develop a specific set of mechanical properties. These cooling rates may vary dramatically within the quenched part and produce unwanted mechanical properties within the part. To estimate the cooling within a part, metallurgists typically analyze their quenching operations using heat transfer coefficients. These HTCs are often developed through a combination of experience and experimentation and are specified as being constant with time as the part cools down. This assumption can produce inaccuracies across the solution as the cooling varies with temperature of the part. Additional difficulties arise with HTCs developed for simple geometries as they are applied to complex shapes. These experimentally determined HTC values may not represent the cooling experienced by the actual part being quenched. Finally, the method used to develop these HTCs from experimental data can develop non-unique solutions that correlate with experiments and yet fail to operate successfully in the analysis of complex parts. 
the primary focus of our work with COMSOL was to provide a tool that could calculate accurate heat transfer coefficients for complex geometries for use in current design practices. The first step to achieve this goal was to develop an accurate heat transfer modeling methodology of the quenching process. COMSOL Multiphysics provides all the heat transfer capabilities needed to develop these complex analyses of both air and oil quenching. The goal of this development is to obtain heat transfer coefficients that are a function of both time and position. Based on current practices, the HTCs would be constant within segments of the surface. The process would also permit the user to define the number of segments and the minimum segment size. Based on these inputs, the algorithm would optimize the segmentation of the surface over which the HTCs would be calculated by minimizing the standard deviation between the results calculated in COMSOL and the constant HTC within the segment. The first step in this process is to develop an accurate heat transfer model. In the next several slides, we will review the key features of COMSOL Multiphysics that enables analysis of the quenching process. COMSOL includes the ability to model conduction, convection, and radiation. The experimental setup being modeled is a cylindrical sample called a pancake or puck between two fans. Heat will transfer from the hot pancake to the surrounding air to cool the pancake. For this transient case, the conduction will be driven by the density, specific heat, and thermal conductivity of the air. In addition, you see the temporal and spatial gradients of the temperature, capital T in the equations. COMSOL includes the capability, these capabilities in the heat transfer in fluids node. The full equation in COMSOL includes the effects of convection as well. To include the convective heat transfer, the analysis must solve the turbulent flow around the pancake. In the full heat transfer equation, the velocity of the flow is included. The velocity provided comes from the solution of the Navier-Stokes equation for the turbulent flow using the K-epsilon model available in the heat transfer module. As a side note, with the release of version 4.3b, COMSOL now has the shear stress transport turbulent model that will provide additional capabilities for these types of heat transfer analyses. This analysis directly couples the heat transfer and Navier-Stokes solutions to, be, to provide the most accurate solution of this problem. As part of this coupling, the velocities in the heat transfer analysis are defined as the velocities from the Navier-Stokes equations. The final heat transfer mechanism that we will seek to include in this model is radiation due to the high temperatures of the pancake prior to quenching. In this case, we solve for the radiation to the ambient environment by adding a surface to ambient radiation node to the model tree. The radiative flux of the pancake surface is a function of the emissivity of the surface, the ambient temperature, and the temperature of the pancake. By including the radiation node in the model tree, the radiation equations are coupled into the solution with the conduction and convection equations. Once the geometry and boundary conditions are included in the model, then the problem can be solved in COMSOL multiphysics. Although the primary variable of interest in, is the temperature in this problem, gas flow velocities must be calculated as part of this solution. In this slide, you are looking at the axisymmetric model of the airflow around the pancake. The color spectrum represents the magnitude of the air velocity in meters per second. The arrows show the flow direction. The two fans above and below the pancake blow air at the pancake. This condition produces a complex flow field that COMSOL multiphysics solves effectively. The velocities shown here include the effect of changing air density due to heating. To validate the analysis developed here, a series of quenching experiments were run using the pancake or puck with thermocouples. This slide shows the actual test puck with the 11 thermocouples embedded into it. In this picture, the puck sits on the quenching rack above the oil bath that we will discuss later. 
In this picture, you can see the leads from the thermocouples for data acquisition during quenching. The pancake has thermocouples located throughout the volume. The location of the 11 thermocouples within the axisymmetric cross-section of the pancake are shown in this slide. Many of the thermocouples are located near the surface of the pancake. The data presented on the following slides comes from thermocouple number 11, located at the mid-thickness of the pancake and at half the radius of the pancake. Looking at how the temperature at this point changes with time, we see in this plot that temperature in degrees Fahrenheit as a function of time from the start of the air quench to approximately 40 minutes. The blue line shows the measured data from the thermocouple and the red line shows the finite element analysis results. This location was chosen because it includes the effects of heat transfer at the pancake surface and the conduction through the solid pancake. In this slide we are looking at the temperature at a single point. In experiments, you can only get data at a few points where probes have been placed. Comsol Multiphysics provides temperature data at thousands of nodes within the model, as shown in this next slide. The spatial variation of temperature shown here is at three different times. Initially, the temperature is relatively uniform, with a slight decrease in temperature near the corner of the pancake. At these points, the airflow convex the maximum amount of heat away. You can see that, that as the quench progresses, these corners cool more rapidly than the rest of the pancake. These analytical results provide us with a clear understanding of the temperature distribution throughout the entire volume of the pancake. The primary objective of this specific work is the heat transfer coefficients on the surface of the pancake. Thus, we will review calculating these heat transfer coefficients and look at the algorithms to select the regions of the surface over which the HTC is constant. The data presented in these two plots shows the variation of the heat transfer coefficient along the top surface of the pancake. The blue line shows the values calculated directly from Comsol Multiphysics. As you can see, the HTCs take the largest values at the corners of the pancake, as shown in the previous slide. The red line shows the results of an algorithm that calculates a constant HTC over a section of the surface. Within this algorithm, the user can specify the number of sections per surface with the user defining three surfaces in the top left plot and six surfaces in the bottom right plot. The algorithm sections the surface based on the gradient. The regions within with the highest gradient are the smallest sections. The algorithm then seeks to minimize the standard deviation between the constant HTC value and the COMSOL results. Currently, the design methods used in industry that this work was conducted for specify that the HTC values are held constant over time. However, the results from COMSOL show that these HTC values do vary with time. In these results, the values of HTC are calculated at three different segments as shown on the y-axis and the time in seconds appearing on the x-axis. The case considered here segments the top surface of the pancake into three segments. As shown in the previous slide, the center segment or the blue curve has the lowest HTC and the outer edge or green curve has the highest HTC. These data indicate that HTC can increase by approximately 40 percent during the quenching process. Thus, the results from COMSOL show that the constant HTC approximation introduces error into the results. Although the primary goal of these analyses is to provide HTC values for additional analysis, because COMSOL multiphysics can solve a wide range of physics, more information can be obtained from these types of analyses. If the solid mechanics are included in this analysis, then information on the plastic deformation during quenching can be obtained. These results show the distribution of plastic strain within the pancake after the quenching operation. Typically, this information would be obtained from a solid mechanics analysis after entering the HTC values calculated from the results shown previously. However, with COMSOL Multiphysics, the solid mechanics analyses can be conducted simultaneously and the stress and strain calculated directly. We have now completed looking at air quench and can focus on our oil quench analyses. In this case, the same hot pancake, or puck, is lowered into the oil bath 
and quench and the quenching oil is pumped around the tank to maximize cooling. In a separate presentation, we can demonstrate how the, this problem was set up in Comsol. But in this presentation, we will just provide a quick overview of the model itself. Here you are looking at the Comsol Multiphysics interface. On the right hand side, you see the geometry window that shows the region for the pancake in blue and the oil region in gray. We have analyzed this model in both two and three dimensions. As part of this problem, we calculated the oil flow around the pancake due to the pumping system. These results show the magnitude of the velocity of the oil at one section through the oil tank. This section includes the outlets for the pumping system. These velocities were developed by solving the Navier-Stokes equations with inputs from the tank pump. In addition to velocity magnitude, Comsol Multiphysics can provide streamlined data as well. Here the streamlines are shown throughout the 3D volume of the tank. The oil enters the tank at the nine no nozzles located under the pancake and exits the outlet in the back right of the tank. Once the pancake has been placed in the tank, it will heat the circulating oil to the point of boiling. This process develops over time through the following stages. Initially, the surface is cooled by a combination of natural and forced convection. Once the oil close to the surface heats to a sufficient point, small bubbles will start to form at the onset of boiling. The number and size of bubbles will grow through a series of different stages until stable film boiling has developed. Each of these stages represents a different boundary condition on the surface of the puck. A key component of this phase of the work was the development of partial differential equations to describe the major stages of boiling, and then applying them within Comsol Multiphysics. The ability to define these PDE boundary conditions provides significant flexibility to the software for complex problems like oil quench. As with the air quench, the results from these Comsol analyses were compared with experimental data for an oil quench experiment. These data show the temperature in degrees F versus time in seconds at two thermocouple locations within the puck. The measured data is shown in blue and the Comsol multiphysics results appear as the red line. These data show that for the first 80 to 100 seconds, the results compare favorably with experimental data. For longer times, these results indicate that we still need to improve the PDEs that we develop to represent this, the different stages of boiling. If you're interested in a demonstration of how to set up this problem, uh, please review our videos uh, for the setup of the oil quench problem. Thank you for your attention during this presentation. In this presentation, we have shown how to use Comsol Multiphysics to solve both a gas and oil quench problem. The gas quenching was done using the capabilities native to Comsol Multiphysics. In the oil quench, we used the ability to define partial differential equations along the boundary of the pancake to represent the stages of the boiling process. As part of this work, the heat transfer coefficients were calculated using a model that can be updated for any shape and include the variations of HTCs with time. In addition, the Comsol Multiphysics capabilities were shown to, by including the calculation of stress and strain within the same heat transfer analysis.